Hi everybody. In this video I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how to use the universal property of a presentation to build homomorphisms between groups. So recall the situation we might be given is that we have two groups, G and H, and we want to build a homomorphism, so maybe F, between G and H. If we're in the situation where we know a presentation of the group. That is, we know that G is given by generators. And relations. Then we know that we can determine homomorphisms by looking at all possible images of the generators and verifying which ones satisfy the original relations. So if we have generators G1 through GS and we have relations R1 through RT then we only have to verify that whatever our choices are for the images of G1 through GS call these F of G1 through F of GS these have to satisfy the same relations, only we replace all of the G1 through GS's in those relations with the corresponding F of G1 through F of GS. So we'll call those new relations F of R1 through F of RT. And if we can check that those uh, images satisfy the same relations, then the universal property of a presentation implies that that choice of F, which is only defined on the generators, will extend uniquely to a group homomorphism from G to H. All right, let's see an example. We're going to find all homomorphisms from C9 to C6. Now, the first thing we need is to have generators and relations for the domain, which in this case is C9. So we know that C9 being a cyclic group has a generator, and we'll just give a name to that generator, we'll call it X. So C9 will be the group generated by X, and the relation, well there's only going to be one relation on a cyclic group, and that'll be that X to the ninth equals the identity. Now it's not important usually to write down generators and relations for the range. However, we do need to give some names to the elements in C6, so let's write down C6 as being generated by Y. And we could write down such that Y to the 6 equals E. And we know that, but I don't want you to con be confused and think that we need to write down the generators and relations for the range. So we're just going to say that C6 is generated by Y. Now the universal property of a presentation tells us all we have to do to define a homomorphism from C9 to C6 is define a map on the generators of C9, and there's only one generator, which is X. So all I have to do is tell you what F of X is. Well, it has to be some element of C6, and we actually know what all those elements are. They're just going to be the powers of Y until we get to Y to the 6, which is now going to be E. Alright, so those are six possibilities for where we could send X. However, the second half of the universal property of a presentation says that we need to make sure that f of x is going to satisfy the original the original relation which was x to the ninth equals e only we apply f to it so it becomes f of x to the nine equals e okay so let's see which of the choices will work okay the first choice is the identity and sure enough f of the identity, excuse me, uh, sure enough, the identity, rather, to the ninth power equals e. So if this is, if this e here, that's your f of x, then f of x to the ninth equals e. So e would be a possible choice. What if we chose y? Well, what's y to the ninth? 
Well, we know that y to the sixth is equal to the identity, so y to the ninth will actually equal y cubed, which is not equal to the identity. So y will not be an acceptable choice. Right. We can check y squared, and since y squared to the ninth is going to be y to the eighteenth, and eighteen is a multiple of six, so that will end up giving you the identity. And so y squared is a good choice. So here, we'll do that in red. Uh, y cubed to the ninth is y to the twenty-seventh, which is not a multiple of six, so that won't be an acceptable choice. Okay, y to the fourth to the ninth is y to the thirty-sixth. That is a multiple of six, so we're good to go. And y to the fifth to the ninth, that's y to the forty-fifth, which is not a multiple of six. And so, in total, we're going to get three possibilities for where to send x. And each one will generate a different homomorphism from C9 to C6. So we'll have three homomorphisms, one that sends x to e, one that sends x to y squared, and one that sends x to y to the fourth. So in this problem, we want to prove that D6, which are the symmetries of a hexagon, that group is isomorphic to a direct sum of a cyclic group of order 2 with a symmetric group on three letters. To build an isomorphism, I first need to have a homomorphism, and then I can show that it's a bijection. To build a homomorphism, I want to use the universal property of a presentation. So step one is to find the generators of D6, and then step two will be to write down the relations. So we'll do that all at once here. So a presentation of D6 is given by generators R and S. So R here is, we think of that as our rotation uh, by one-sixth of a circle in the clock, clockwise direction, and S is a reflection across any reasonable line of symmetry. The three relations that, well, if you rotate six times, you get the identity. If you reflect twice, you get the identity. And if you rotate and then reflect, it's the same thing as reflecting and then rotating five times. Now recall, we don't need generators and relations for the group in the range, the, CT, the C2 plus S3. However, for C2, it will be useful to at least give a name to the generator. So we'll call it Y. Okay, so now we need to figure out possibilities for where we can send R and S in C2 plus S3, such that they'll satisfy the relations. Now, since I'm only looking for a specific isomorphism, I, I don't want to find all possibilities. I just want to find ones that make sense. So, for instance, I know that f of r is going to have to satisfy f of r to the sixth is equal to the identity. But I don't want it to be just satisfying that relation. I actually know r has order six, and I know that under an isomorphism, its image better have order six. Now, neither C2 or S3 has an element of order six, but if you take the direct sum, you can get one by sending f of r to y comma, so y is order 2, I just want to put here an element from S3 of order 3. The GC, or the least common multiple of 2 and 3 will be 6, so this ought to do the trick. So I'm going to choose the permutation 1, 2, 3. Now where can I send f of s? Well, it has to be an element that when I square it, I get the identity element. Now there's a couple of choices for where to, where to send it. And uh, I'm going to choose the identity for the C2 component and the transposition 1, 2 for the S3 component. Now, you might wonder why I don't just let it equal something like y, comma e. This will have order 2. And the reason is, because if I look at the choice of f of r, f of r has the property that if I cube it, the second component will become the identity, and the first component will become y again. And I absolutely do not want f of r cubed to equal f of s, because, well, on the d6 side, that would be the same as saying that r cubed equaled s, which doesn't happen. So this ye is not a good choice. Now, again, we've made these choices for a couple of reasons, but one of them is they're going to satisfy the relations. We know that f of r to the sixth is going to be the identity because y comma 1, 2, 3 is going to have order 6. 
and we know that f of s squared is going to be the identity because e comma 1 2 is equal to the identity. And that tells us that the first two relations are satisfied but there's still the third relation to check. So let's consider f of s times f of r. So that's going to equal e12 times y123. And it's not hard to check that this is equal to y23. All right, now we'll check the other direction. f of r to the fifth times f of s. Now, f of r was y and then 1, 2, 3. If you raise the y to the fifth, you'll just get back y. And 1, 2, 3 has order 2. If you raise it to the fifth, you'll get 1, 2, 3 squared, which is 1, 3, 2. Okay, and then the f of s is still e, 1, 2. And again, it's very easy to check. The product here is going to be y, 2, 3. And so this tells us that our choices for f of r and f of s are satisfying all three relations. And so f is going to extend by the universal property of a presentation to a homomorphism from d6 to c2 plus C s3. Now to show that we actually have an isomorphism, we need to show that we have a bijection. And the easiest way to do this, first check the order. We know that the order of d6 is 12. And the order of C2 plus S3 is just 2 times 6, which is also 12. So they have the same order. So if we can show either 1 to 1 or on to, we'll be done. And the way we're going to show on to is by using Lagrange's theorem. We know that F of D6 is going to contain a bunch of elements. Namely, well, what's going to be in it? You're going to have F of R f of s, and then well you have powers of f of r, and we know it has order 6, you'll have f of r squared, and f of r cubed, and f of r to the fourth, and f of r to the fifth, and these are all going to be different, because we chose elements of order 2 and 6. So we couldn't have, you know, f of r to the fourth already equaling something, uh, something else that we already have. On a, in addition to these six elements, of course, we're going to get the identity element, which was EE. E. Now already we have seven elements in the image. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, the image has to be a subgroup, but it has seven elements. By Lagrange's theorem, we get that the image must be the entire group. Right? So again, f of d6 is a subgroup of c2 plus s3, but the order of f of d6 is at least 7. We counted 7 elements already. And since c2 plus s3 has 12 elements, the next divisor is 12. So this implies that f of d6 equals c2 plus s3. And hence we get our isomorphism.